the seals of Rafflin Island and they just look great. There's a little clip that holds the flux compass in place and it may have come loose. Uh, when we get into port we'll have a look at it. We took the ferry across from Ballycastle to Rathlin Island because we wanted to see the puffins. <laughs> there are lots of puffins in this picture, hiding amongst tens of thousands of guillemots, but we did manage to see some. Their bright orange feet made them stand out and easy to spot in the binoculars. We then looked at Rathlin's famous upside down lighthouse before catching the bus back to the only town on the island. seals of Rafflin Island and they just look great. You can't get too close because obviously um, you know they are wild animals but you can see them quite well. Even can take in the ferry you can have entertainment and stuff like that because there's the guys here who are playing um, the accordion which is always a bit of a laugh. Stay home and love. Eventually, it was time to leave Ballycastle and sail west to Portrush. Well, there's certainly a lot to uh, keep an eye out as you, um, as we sail across the uh, north coast of Ireland. Um, we've got Rafflin Island uh, to one side of us. Uh, behind Beverly, we've got um, Karakuri Bridge. Can't really see the bridge from where we are, but we can certainly see Sheep Island, um, which is our next waypoint um, along the coast. So, plenty to see. We were admiring the Giants Causeway coast when all of a sudden a problem cropped up. So our current issue is that is the heading on the boat's compass and that is the heading on Annie's compass. And as you can see there's a difference. And what we suspect has happened is that in the rough storms we've had recently there's a little clip that holds the flux compass in place and it may have come loose. Uh, when we get into port we'll have a look at it. Right now we're about an hour and a half out and it's not worth pulling things apart while we're at sea. It's just simply not worth the trouble. Peverly and I have just come in from our passage from uh, Ballycastle to Port Roche and I have to say this is where you need something like uh, Mr D. Uh, he really triumphs because um, we've come in and we've got a really good hot meal ready for us and that's exactly what you want after a really really hard day. It's not really it wasn't that hard because it was just sort of like a, a, a passage but after a passage you need some really good hot food. Well as you can see we've had to moor up and raft up rather against this rather large 50 footer and what I'm doing at the minute is I'm running a line back because the fishing boat that was there has gone and the plan is now to um, move the boat back. So we'll run a couple of lines to the dock, we'll give it a little burst of reverse on the engine and then we'll put it into that pontoon using the lines. That's the plan. What Bev's doing at the moment is finding if there's any reason why um, the flux capacity <laughs> Flux Compass um, went astray yesterday, um, so um, she's got a compass in the 
starboard locker having us having a look see if there's any um anything magnetic that could have caused the issue but look at my uh cockpit it's got fenders everywhere it's 10 o'clock in the morning in northern ireland's version of blackpool and you can tell it's pre-season it's 10 o'clock on a saturday morning and there's hardly a sinner in sight Oh, got some more money. Oh, I'm winning big here. So how much have you won, Bev? Minus 32. <laughs> well, I've just spent a pound's worth of two peas and I have got a classic key ring. <laughs> and I've won a refresher bar. Isn't that fantastic? Well, Port Rush is more like Port Slow, but um, very quiet little sleepy place. But I've just gone and spent some more two peas in the arcades and I've got myself a lolly. So I'm going to eat this as I walk back down to the last. I know um, our channel is a little bit more warts and all kind of channel this is what sailing is really like and cruising in the UK is really like but there are times when I really could do with a few less warts it is 4 30 in the morning and if you ever hear the words dredging operations in um, progress run a mile do not go to the harbour. We came here because um, Bev's mum is on holiday here. So um, this was a great way to see Bev's mum. But otherwise, I would have not arrived, come to Port Roche. Because warts and all is not good. stomach's in knots because Beverly normally does harbours <laughs> but I've got to be able to sail this boat single-handed and I, so I've got to do it but so my stomach's in knots and to add to my uh, worries a um, the people people have just started puddle boarding in the marina and I'm just like oh why well I did it I got I got us out and then uh, when we were out in the bay I had to do little circles because uh, Annie had gone on the blink in our previous passage and now we're uh, gonna have to move her again <laughs> but anyway Annie had gone on the blink and uh, so I was driving around in circles but at least now Annie is uh, that's our uh, autopilot is now saying roughly exactly the same as um, what the compass is saying and um, although I'm standing here it's really Annie who's actually in control there's something magical about sailing I think it's the, the quietness of everything um, even though it's a pretty overclass day um, it just feels magical and uh, whoa We've got plenty of roly stuff because we're actually, uh, this will be our very first Atlantic swell that we've ever encountered. So we're getting plenty of that as we sail across to Isla. There was a change in the wind and the waves began to pile up and the Coast Guard started warning of deteriorating weather. So we changed our strategy and motor sailed straight towards the nearest safe harbour, which was Port Ellen and Isla. That particular tanker appeared out of practically nowhere, didn't it Bev? Just came out of the mist. 
has came out of the mist. So that's a floating bomb, is it, Bev? That's a floating bomb. That thing goes off for all toast. Yeah. Even at this distance. Yeah. Basically, it's um, a gas. gas. It's a gas carrier. So that's what a floating bomb looked like. Uh, that's something that we go and find out what that is. A little bit foggy coming in. But I can imagine this scenery being absolutely stunning on a beautiful day. But that's Port Ellen ahead of us. But yeah, we've got it in the fog. But well, it's really just slight mist. So that's what we've got. We've reached Port Ellen on uh, Isla and it looks absolutely glorious glorious as you can see lovely little harbour to be in but there are hidden hazards aren't there yes um we came in um into the harbour last night and um we were advised um by a, a local to move our boat from um the seaward side to the harbour side, you know, to the inside, because there's going to be a bit of a blow later, and um, you know, it's slightly more sheltered on the harbour side. So, um, so we decided to do that, and um, Bev's put the boat into reverse, and all of a sudden it started juddering. <laughs> 